all right guys welcome we're back again as usual let us know if the sound in the video and stuff is up to standard now we're doing better do our best to fix it we're gonna be continuing just a little bit from last session where we were talking about Camorra's we got a few other things that we want to show you guys that will go over and then we'll get into some passing from headquarters so obviously passing as usual is a subject we really like then and one that Matt and I both you know or excel at so the interesting thing is that we both have kind of a lot of interesting details to share about passing in particular headquarters passing but we rarely get to teach teach a class together so you know believe it or not this is a strange time for everyone but it's been really cool getting to just kind of teach with Matt which is something I haven't gotten to do a lot over the years so yeah man it's been a blast yeah so I agree we both have a ton to offer and in all those spaces been enjoying it yeah yeah so we'll do the same thing guys same format we'll start like teaching we'll go over a bunch of stuff answer your questions as we go we'll get into HQ passing you know I think they'll probably take around an hour and then we'll get into to Q&A after that you guys can ask about any position you want after that try to hold the questions to like the passing stuff while we're we're explaining those things and then like I said when we do Q&A we'll open it up to just whatever you guys want to ask okay all right what do we have here Jesus Burton all right man so let's see Camorra's man what do we have to go over from last class I did I the Kimura stuff I wanted to show is actually related to headquarters, so okay. I would probably punt uh, that till later in headquarters. But okay. Unless you so had anything like no, no, man, that that's perfect actually. Um, what I can do though is show um, one of the ways I like to finish, you know, by by kind of sliding my leg over the head and rolling through, uh, which we didn't go over. Um, I don't think we went over it at all uh, last class, so I'll show that really quick, and then we can just get straight into H HQ from there. Sure. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, guys. So first things first, I got Coach Matt um, in a Kimura situation. We talked about sort of getting there from this side control situation with the hip locked. All right, having Coach Matt get a, get get bored under here, or just get stressed out, depressed, whatever you want to call it. I swing around, shift my hips, and start getting to the Kimura um, in this fashion. All right. So one of the ways that once we get all the way around. In position, we got the Kimura locked up. You know, we've maybe gotten on top here, and we're, we're thinking about finishing. Um, whatever, like we talked about, pulling the elbow up to the chest, projecting our hips forward, doing whatever we need to do on the bottom side to pull the hands apart, and then finishing right, making sure we rotate our torso and, and just get real tight. So I wanted to go over like an another way that I like to finish um, the Kimura when. I've locked it up from side control or even half guard. So we can start in half guard, right? So say we're in this position here, this happens a lot. Maybe we were in side control, I'll pop out to side control too, just to make it even more extreme. And I got to a position where I have the Kimura locked up. This happens a lot and a lot of people have trouble finishing this. So one thing I like to do from here guys, like once I have the wrist locked, I've gotten my, my hands connected and I have control of the arm, all right? A lot of times you end up sort of fighting this battle where person feels the Kimura they start stretching out their arm and you have to switch you know to the straight arm lock maybe you miss that their hand goes up further you have to switch again and start working towards the Americana back and forth etc right so one of the things I like to do from here to keep this locked up is slide into um, really to be honest there's one or two ways I could do this sometimes I actually put myself back in half guard just because as I'll show you guys, there's like a really good way to finish from this position that makes the Kimura finish really strong. So what I'll do from here, whether the, the guy fought back to half guard or I just sort of like let my leg uh, hang there so I have access to this knee pit, what I'll do from here is just start stretching, rotating, changing my angle, right? What I'm really trying to do guys here is get my left leg in position to go over Coach Matt's head. That's what I want, all right? How do I do that? Sometimes it's more like, and around the head thing. Sometimes it's more brutal where I'm taking, I'm gonna go real soft here, Matt. 
taking like my shin is sort of dragging it across the person's face, putting my knee on the ground. And usually they'll give up like that space just to relieve the pressure. But basically what I want is to be in a half guard here on the bottom side, all right? And then have my, my leg wrapped around his head here on the top side. From this position, I'm pulling the arm in really tight. And instead of just trying to finish here, which I might be able to do, I pull this in tight and I just roll towards Coach Matt's head. So I end up in this position. You'll see uh, my leg here sort of picking his head up, scooping his head up, and his leg underneath here is trapped along with mine. So I'm curling my leg in here to keep this stable, you know, putting some pressure on the back of his head, back of his head, and just rolling through. So I end up in this nice, like really closed, really tight position. All right, where Coach Matt, if he wants to extend his frame at all, extend his body out, try to extend that, it's super hard because he's trapped with my legs here. So basically I'm cradling his body with my two legs while still having the Kimura locked up. From here, I'm easily able to just bring his hand towards his head, towards the back of his head and finish. You guys notice he's tapping like about right here. All right, so someone with a more flexible shoulder, you may be able to go up higher. You may have to go up higher. But that's the general idea, guys. It's very simple. I'll go through it one more time. You guys are thinking about this and you have trouble with it. All right, just like go back and watch the video. So again, I'm here on the on top in top half basically. All right, so I've done this thing where maybe Matt's fighting me. You know, he's got an underhook here and I just turn. Go to this position Coach Matt was talking about last class. Get control of the wrist, put it on the floor, lock up my hands, except from here I don't try to finish and I don't try to use it to pass. I just shift my hips towards his head, going towards north-south, keeping his body curled up here. I get my left leg over his head, all right, and eventually tuck my, like my calf muscle behind his neck. From here, all I'm gonna do is pull the arm in nice and tight, and I'm just gonna roll, all right, over my far shoulder and towards the back of Coach Matt's head, just like this. Putting him in this closed position from here, squeezing with my legs, keeping this tight, all right? Most strong guys especially are gonna try to straighten out here, just don't let them, guys. It's really easy. My legs are way stronger uh, than, than any extension you can get here. And then I just slowly move that hand towards the back of his head. Go really slow. Even on like an opponent in a tournament, guys, um, you're putting a lot, a lot of torque on the shoulder there and you don't need to rip it. You have complete control. So that's one of my favorite ways to finish uh, the Kimura, especially if the guy's being difficult. You know, it's hard for me to just step over the head or something like that. I'll use that sort of tighter, flatter method um, folding method to finish. So, brutal. What do you think, Matt? Love it. Brutal. Uh, Don't show it again. Yeah. <laughs> Don't show it again. <laughs> I got this. Nice. Oh, okay. Or plow. <laughs> nice. All right. Can you get into headquarters? Sure. All right, Coach Matt, what is headquarters? Headquarters. What is headquarters? Man, that's like an existential question here. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, headquarters is basically uh, the, the, the way I, I like to describe it is I'm using my entire body to dominate and isolate one of my opponent's legs. Um, so it takes different uh, forms depending on the grappler's preference. Right. Um, our basic position, I'm sitting in on this leg heavy. Um, you'll see you'll see different grapplers approach this differently depending on their style their weight their rule set the physical characteristics of their opponent um, I really like to be like kind of on my toes heavy on this uh, heavy on this hook here and I like to play kind of low um, you'll see guys like the, the the Mendez brothers they're like up here and they're kind of like more in a, a pinched position um, a lot of nogi, nogi guys, um, you'll see go like guys like Gordon Ryan, they'll play here, yeah. um, this kind of like floating passing, right? So they're, they're, their weight is over their opponent. But in each case, we're using, uh, we're using our weight to neutralize one leg, and we're using our, our far leg to keep this other leg out of play and at bay. So in, the, in a nutshell, that's what headquarters is. Um, you know, I, I recommend it as a passing style to pretty much anybody because it is successfully used in all manners of high level competition. Um, you can do it if you're 14, you can do it if you're, you're 70 or right. so. Uh, one other question, so let's go back to the position. I'm just gonna ask a couple questions just to, you know, 
provide some clarity for folks that are looking at this so to make sure they're playing it the right way. One thing I feel, guys, as I'm down here, is that Coach Matt's really pressuring heavily into my shin. His, uh, his upper body is almost flat on top of my shin here. It's like directly aligned, and my heel's being pushed towards my butt, all right? So that means for me, guys, it's really difficult for me to lift here, all right? I think even if I got my, my hands on the lapels and tried to lift, it's really, really difficult. It feels like I'm hurting my knee. I'm just not quite strong enough. Uh, the other thing that's, that's happened that's, that's really important here is because he's like bearing down on my leg on this side, guys, it's really difficult for me to open my leg. And for example, say he was thinking about knee cutting, it's really hard right now, at least for me to fight to my hip. Like he's gonna get kind of to this position before I can get my knee in the way, you know, get a knee shield there or anything just because he's starting in this really solid position. Going this way is gonna get me smash pass. I can just sort of feel that naturally. Uh, so honestly guys, it really feels like because he's doing the position so well just at the beginning, at the outset, I just sort of have to wait on him. You know, I have to wait on him to try and begin his passing motion, hope that he screws it up so I can get some space. So as the guard player, you know, try to avoid this position, try to frame out, try to keep your legs free. Once he's kind of like got me here, I feel really stuck. So I don't know if I missed anything, but I just wanted to like no, describe perfect. how this feels. Um, another thing, guys, if, if you're in a, a rule set where we're in the gi, so this is this is pretty important. Um, like JT Torres showed this. Um, I felt it for some really good grapplers. I like to curl this lapel up just off the bat. So what that does, when, when I'm raising his upper back off the mat a little bit, it, it compresses him and reduces his hip mobility a lot. So Coach Tim tries to move around here, it's, it's really hard. If his back is flatter on the mat, he has a little bit more mobility here. Yeah. Um, and he just doesn't feel claustrophobic and pressure. Yeah, I can push, I can pull, I can start fighting grips, I can start pulling out lapels. It so, just feels easier. Yeah, so guys, it, it really is a zero-sum game. Um, you know, what's what's good for me is bad for Tim, and what's bad for Tim is good for me. So this right here makes Coach Tim uncomfortable, it makes him feel bad, therefore it's good good for me. Right. So, um, really simple. So, um, we do like entries or? Yeah, we could like, the position? I think entries are super important because like I feel like if the entry to the headquarters is bad, you'll get kicked over the top very easily and put on your hands, um, you know, like mm -hmm. not on your own terms. Um, and then also, I think what can happen is the person can just sort of immediately fight to their near hip and get the knee shield in, which yep. is then something you have to deal with. So I think the way you enter is really important. Yep. So I think, um, you know, I can show an entry from like some of the three most common positions I see as a passer. Let's do it. So the first one would be like this, just like a disconnected position where I'm fighting against the seated guard. I need to need to find a way into headquarters. So um, first thing, I don't want to go double ankle here. This is how you get arm dragged or collar dragged by a good passer. I like to check my opponent's shoulder. So with one hand, I'm going to check the shoulder. The other one, I'm going to go here. So Coach Tim tries to arm drag here. It's just it's just off. It doesn't if you it doesn't maybe look like it would work, but if you're on bottom, it just doesn't feel right. So also, like, guys, he's picking this foot up. Like, honestly, if I'm if I'm arm dragging, say he wasn't posting, I want to be able to do like something like this. I want to be able to like scoot out using this foot. I just can't. My foot's in the air. It's just super awkward. I don't have any power. Yeah, it puts it puts you on the bottom in this weird uh, kind of limbo, and that's that's what we want. So once I establish those grips, I want to run my opponent down. All right. So we're here. You might need a grip fight a little bit to get in. Once I'm here, I. I don't push, all right? Like, Coach Tim is too strong for me to just push him over. I use my legs and I run. I literally run him down like this, all right? Uh, you can't really see very well, but if we turn this way, I, I want my goal, my right foot, I want to step to his belt line, all right? Boom, here. So what that does is it keeps a lot of like tension on this leg. So if he's trying to like get this knee in, it's gonna be hard. If I step in too shallow, right? I, if I don't put the appropriate pressure on him, he can like get this shin, he can go shin on shin, he can get his delt keep a hook in. So much stuff. That is good. There's all kinds of uh, issues you'll run into there. So we want the we want to kind of split the person up. So boom, I'm here. 
that's our basic entry from like a neutral position. So you can rep this uh, quick, you know, like if, if we're, we're doing speed drills like we were before, boom, run them down. Back to neutral, run them down. All right guys, so really, really simple, uh, effective way to, to deal with the seated guard, get into headquarters. So no questions, I'll move on to another common position, Deli Hiva. What do we do here, guys? Right, so Deli Hiva will always be like this basic configuration. You have your Deli Hiva leg and you have your off leg. So we want to sit, it's just logical that we're sitting on the off leg. So what I need to do, I need to clear this Deli Hiva hook first. Um, you'll notice that sometimes I've seen people try to step on this hook. If the Deli Hiva hook is still in, as soon as I pick my leg up, I'm going somewhere. <laughs> You know what I mean? He has just way too much control over my base. I also have really good connection via the hook, guys. So I can just, when Matt changes his base, it's really easy for me to feel. I immediately mm -hmm. feel that. Like, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I may tilt. I may swing to the inside, kick and forward. There's so much stuff, but I immediately feel it. So you've got to be aware of that. Yep, that's that's exactly right. And um, there's no, it's it's very common to see people struggling with Dele Hiva. They fight everything but this hook. This hook is what is really controlling us and, and able to like mess with our base. Once this hook is gone, like it's kind of shitty, you know. Yeah, there's, there's, there's not position all there's, of a sudden. There's, there's not much stuff going on. Like he's gonna need to switch, but we're not gonna like hang around for for him to like switch his guard. So we're gonna open. All right. So one way I like to do this, I, I really to to sit in headquarters. I like the Leandro Low type method. So I'm just grabbing both pants, right? putting a little bit of pressure. All right, now I'm gonna turn my right knee out. So I'm gonna straighten it, turn it out, and then drive back in. Once I'm here, I'm just stepping over and getting into position. So this is another thing you can drill very quickly, right? Involves a little bit of footwork. So you'll notice. It might be a little bit more sticky now, guys. You, you'll see, like, there's some difficulty to it, right? Yeah, it's not. You, you may need to maneuver both yourself and the other person's leg into position. That's kind of a feel thing. Another thing you'll notice, I need to step back a little bit and open myself up to be able to turn around and step and sit on this hook heavy. Um, don't make the mistake of like stepping back too far. Right. right, we're here. Oh man, I had to step back all the way over here. You have somebody that's good at barambolo, good at baby bolo, good at any, any of that stuff. like. You're gonna get your back taken. So I'm just gonna step back enough that I can square back up. Another thing that just sort of happened there, guys, you notice Coach Matt kind of turning, popping the hook off, turning his knee, plus stepping on top of my shin. Actually, all happened simultaneously. He didn't even think about it. As, as he was actually doing it, he wasn't like, okay, pop the hook off. Like all of this happened at once. And like, that's your goal as you're, you're drilling and practicing this stuff smooth it out so much that step one, step two, step three, just become simultaneous and smooth. Exactly right. Yeah, I'm, I'm breaking this down kind of ABC one, two, three, but in reality, you know, when you get good at this, this stuff will take you less than a second to, to actually accomplish. It takes a lot of feel, but it's it's worth putting the time in to like get good at it. All right. Coach uh, Mac, quick troubleshooting question when you're dealing with Dela Hiva, uh, especially in the gi. Do you have anything you do in particular to deal with folks that take this pant grip? Because a lot of guys won't just cover the ankle. I tend to grab the ankle because I because I like to like a, like I said have my my game like transfer from knee to no knee. But a lot of like e guys, um, just guys in general, will like play here. And so you're trying to peel the hook off, like you may pop the hook off, but they've got this really strong yeah. grip and they're able to get it right back just because the grip is so strong. Like, do you have any tricks you use to like kind of break this grip? It can be a pain in the ass, um, and you know, like that was something I, I was troubleshooting, you know, up until we were, up until I had my knee surgery, actually. So, right. I like to go towards it. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, um, you can blast away from it, like with knee cuts and stuff. Right. But like, you know, a lot of times what happens is I go with my knee cut. You put this hook in, and like, yeah. I'm, I'm off balance. I'm off balance here. 
So I've had the most success actually going towards it and like smashing the person's hand. So instead of like sitting, um, instead of sitting to headquarters, I try to like get inside of these grips. All right, and then I'm gonna drive my shin over your shin. That breaks it really well. Uh, yeah, that's that's the most success I've had with that. But that's a that is a pain in the ass in the gi, man. Somebody that's good at that. The way I show it, you know, that's easier said than done to a good black belt. But again, coach coach Tim bring, brings up a really good point. Um, some of these some of these gi grips on the pants really can derail you. I really like getting inside. Once he's here, guys, this is very difficult. Like, he's probably going to switch. Go. Yeah, because this is He'll tough. switch to some, and that's what happens. Right. And, like, I guess at that point, I, I've sort of regarded, like, to, like, some small degree. Mm -hmm. um, but now that the grip's broken, you know, Matt can run to the headquarters. Yeah, I'm, he can, can sort of go back to that run to the headquarters position that we talked about first. So Yeah, I'm, it's putting, all I'm, I'm putting you slightly on the, on the defensive. Right. And honestly, guys, my fingers got smashed. Like that's a hard transition. Yeah, that sucks. I feel it. Has you know who's actually really good at that is On. Yeah. On Bong. He staples with his. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if On On's watching, but. Shit. I actually know why. On Shout practices. Uh, on practices the long step quite a bit. Yep. And because he practices the long step, he's uh, gotten very good at sort of like dropping his knee and like dragging his shin across reps. Yeah. yeah. So. That's a that's a good example, guys. Drilling, practicing the stuff that you like that you that can like have benefits uh, kind of across the board you know it's really hard to maintain grips on his lower pants just because he's gotten so good at that particular move. for sure all right uh, I guess the last entry we'll do and uh, this is something people find themselves stuck in all the time is knee shield right right so um, if we're here in knee shield like like I said before um, guys black belts who have their game established they know how to get to their favorite position from anywhere. They will find a way to get it. So um, this is a very, very important movement. I don't I don't know if it's necessarily like stressed enough, but um, you know, there's a lot of, and especially in the gi, like we need that person flat on their back. Fighting through this, it's just, it's so hard when, when people have your collar and people get your pants and their, your sleeves. It's like, it can be such a, a pain in the ass to, to fight through this. So I just like to do a quick, I just call it like a reset. So I like to grab, I like to literally grab the person's belt or grab inside of this like, uh, this kind of hole here. This is a valid grip right. here in the pants. Um, I just feel like it's really, I can put all my weight on it, right? So I, I want something I can put all my weight on. So I, I go here and I get, a, I get like a stiff arm. The next thing I do, I just grab Coach Tim's pants and a uh, really important thing here, when we step up into headquarters, I don't want to step near Coach Tim's head. I've been burned by this before. So you don't want to step up here, have the person go under you, and now like the stuff. guy's under my base, that is, that's the opposite of what we're doing at headquarters, right? I want to step back as I bring his knee up. So I step my base up and I walk back, all right, into headquarters. Again, this is a really, man, this is a really easy thing to drill. Um, you can drill this with wife, girlfriend, whoever. All right, grab the bottom of the pants, grab the, uh, grab the, the pants at the hip here. I step my foot up, again, out of range. Don't step up like this. I step my foot up out of range. I'm gonna bring Coach Tim's hips square towards the ceiling. And I'm gonna kind of walk back in a circle. All right, so if you guys see this this way, you see I'm not stepping up here, right? I step up and I, I kind of walk back. All right, shuffle back and we're in our headquarters position. Can't be lazy there, guys. I'll show you guys uh, why I think you shouldn't be lazy there. So if Coach Matt steps close to my hand, like he's talking about, and then he's lazy with his grip on this side, he's not stapling it down. He's not working to get his his hand to the inside, like his arm to the inside eventually. As he does this, it's really, it's the easiest thing in the world for me to tell here. As soon as he steps up, the black belt's gonna feel that immediately and they're just gonna tilt you. And like, you can fight from here if this sucks. I'm probably yeah. gonna start to work out. And then you've gotta try and get away from it, you know? Yeah, so, but this, this literally happened to me. 
in competition. So yeah. I learned um, the best lessons are the ones that are like involve failures in front of, in front of like friends and family and girlfriends and stuff. So yeah, it's really tough. Guys, it to sucks. Get you remember that? <laughs> you remember? You don't want to get beaten from in front of your family and your fam. Um, I'll say this. I think uh, maybe there's like a a belief that a sweep is some like always some complex flashy thing. A lot of times guys I've noticed in even high level competition, a lot of the sweeps are just like a guy getting knocked over. Like they made a mistake, you know, they maybe came up, created a dead angle or something and they just get knocked over and you're like, man, that was not complex at all. But that's what happens. Um, really good guard player um, and a good top player, good passer is always gonna have a really strong connection to you in some way, um, Yeah, uh, particularly to your hips. So when Coach Matt's hips uh, are in the wrong spot, it's not, if I were blind, I would still be able to, to hit that sweep. I just feel it. Um, it you intuit it over time. It's not, I'm not even thinking about a move there. I'm just like, man, this guy's off base. To the left, I'm gonna come up and go that way. I can just feel it. So just remember that, guys. Yeah, Let's, like th that's the mark of a good guard player. It's, um, they, can, they can force their will on you in terms of like proactively imposing their sweep game. Or they can like capitalize when you fuck up. Right. So either thing can happen. Either thing <laughs> has happened to me. Um, it will happen to, to all of us. But um, you know, if we minimize our mistakes on top, we we narrow that window down a little bit for them to be able to exploit us. So. Right. Uh, by the way, guys, just that. to to chime in, I hope you guys have all uh, gotten your mohawks cut. <laughs> Since we're all stuck at home, I've got mine. I freshened it up today. Coach Matt's mohawk's still pretty fresh. Um, get those haircuts, guys. Just let your kid do it, whoever who cares. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you guys aren't, um, you know, if you guys are working from home, um, not client facing, I guess we're client facing, but. Technically, but we just really don't care. Like it's a normal atmosphere, so I'm not, I'm not super worried about it. All right, so we got our headquarters down pat. We, we sort of understand how to get there from a couple of positions or just how to enter an open guard into headquarters. What's our what's our favorite pass from there? What's our basic, what's our first attack? So uh, for me, like everything, the, the, the highest percentage pass I get is the knee cut, but everything, um, every all the offense comes off of this knee tap that you do, right? So what is the knee tap? This thing is like, done me so much good over the years, right? So we're sitting in our headquarters position. The knee tap is, I'm putting my hand here on Coach Tim's knee. I'm gonna sit up, all right? I'm just gonna stand up a little bit, lift my butt, and I'm gonna push his knee back and towards, towards like his other foot. So we're just going here, all right? And then we're sitting into this position. So this is like three quarter amount, guys. Um, ideally, we can get like some kind of double under scenario, but um, I can't tell you how many times I've just been here and like done this and it's worked. Both <laughs> Ian and Nogi, yeah. right? Um, so as simple as that is, like like you, maybe you'll get that 10% uh, of the time uh, successfully, but what, what you'll get almost 100% of the time is a reaction, right? So when I stand up and I try to push you, you're gonna pull back towards your head, right? So when Coach Tim is flexing his hip towards his head, he's strong, his legs are strong this way. Like, you They're notice, pull, yeah, you know? I, I, like if I pull his leg, I'm, I'm pulling everything. I'm not gonna be able to, to shove that through my leg. He's weak this way, right? Right. So when Coach Tim is going back, we can, we can like, if he pulls back, we can do these redirections, right? Which we're gonna do with our weight. So the first one, all right, this is a combination drill or combination attack. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Coach Tim's going to pull back. I'm going to use that to redirect his leg. So we're here in our headquarters. I try the knee push. He pulls back. We cut, right? Just like, just like we did, uh, what was it? Our first stream, we did knee cuts. However you like to do it, however you can do it, um, you know, Oftentimes in this position, we're gonna have the lapel here with inside control on our arm, right? So we won't always need an underhook. Coach Tim resists, he pulls back, I cut. I already have this inside position with my, uh, with my forearm here. Where's your elbow going over here, Coach? 
My elbow's like almost to the mat, right? So um, it's not necessarily the underhook, it's the spirit of the underhook, right? The point of the underhook is to keep Tim flat, keep him from getting around to my back. If I can accomplish that with this, great. If I can accomplish that with the hand on the bicep, great. We can totally pass this way. Um, if you need the underhook, you can always switch. Right. But that's kind of our first uh, first line of attack. So can I uh, can I add to that a little bit? Yeah. So guys, that's it, man. Like I, I love that Coach Matt mentioned just sort of pushing the knee through as like a first uh, salvo, you know, the, firing the first shot. Um, I do that all the time too. And believe it or not, guys, I get it a lot. A lot of times you guys have seen yeah. me do that sort of Marcelo, both knees, I push mm -hmm. both knees through and go straight to mount. That kind of stuff, always try it. Um, especially if you're at a tournament, this is a guy that a guy or girl has never rolled with you before. It's worth the try. Um, believe it or not, like for example, when you try that sort of double knee pass uh, in IBJJF competition in particular, really any competition, if I do this, boom, Coach Matt pushes me off and I don't get the pass, I reset. I get two advantages for that. It's weird, but I, I need, it was a near, near press, pass near and a near mount at the same time. So I, I'm pretty strategic when I'm in a points term, you guys. Um, you know, you guys, I, I think you always want to think about like how, what are your win conditions in whatever rule set you're in. So when I'm in a points match, guys, I'm always thinking about racking up advantages, racking up points. I'm always thinking about submission. That's what I want. I want to end the match as quickly as possible. But in the meantime, in the interim, I'm trying to get dominant positions and rack up as much stuff on my side of the scoreboard as possible. So that kind of stuff is really, really good for that reason. You jam that knee through, you know, pop through with a quick knee cut, and almost get it, he resets. That's a quick advantage, dude, you know? And like, he's scared now. He's gonna play more and more tentative in his guard. So just think about that stuff. Yep. So, all right, so Coach Matt's on the ground. Um, you know, we'll say he's already here and I've gotten into headquarters, guys. So. One thing, uh, like Coach Matt said, you're gonna do, you always wanna have this knee to the inside, all right, and you wanna sit right on top of the shin. So your intro position sort of looks like this, all right? So one of the things I'm gonna do, guys, I'm always thinking about the knee cut, which means from this position, I wanna do something like this, right? I gotta swing my hips to the other side. Um, what I like to do a little bit, uh, slightly different from Coach Matt, is I like to take this hand and just sort of like, snake it along the inside of my own leg and put it on the hip, all right? Just to start, all right? My other hand, I'm gonna come to the lapel and just pull Coach Matt up. Just getting like a strong grip, all right? And you guys will see why I'm doing that. The reason why like, I'm pulling him up off the mat were for the same reasons Coach Matt talked about earlier, but also I'm pulling my, my body into his shin. So I'm pushing like his heel close to his butt even further, all right? Makes it less likely that he's gonna move. Let's swing around a little bit here. Just so we're pointing this way. All right, guys, so I'm in this position. My hand's near the hip, or maybe it's on the ground down here, shallow underhook, something like that. From here, guys, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with my far arm. I'm gonna whip myself into, like here in this position, right? Coach Matt is probably, if he's a good guard player, he's gonna fight to this side, all right? He needs to get like a knee shield or something in. He knows like if he just sits here, I'm gonna whip into the knee cut. So a lot of guys will fight to this hip. If he does nothing, once I plant this hand or put it on his hip and anchor, if he does nothing, I'm just gonna smash pass him into oblivion. He knows that, all right? So if you ever get to headquarters and your opponent's not moving, grip up, anchor, and just smash, all right? We can talk about that a little bit later, but I wanna focus on the knee cut, all right? Most good guys, when you do something like this, they're like, shit. I need to go this way, and they're gonna fight to this hip. But what did I already do by anchoring my hand? My elbows to the inside here. I'm gonna point my knee up the middle. Look where my hand goes. There's no knee shield possibility. See that? My elbow's here. If his leg's up here bothering me, like it's actually on my arm, I'll just flare my elbow out. Keep your leg up here if you don't mind, just like, yeah. So if he's trying to bring this leg up, it's really hard, right, Matt? I'm just flaring this elbow out, guys. Inside space is dominated, all right? The other thing I like to do against really good guard players is keep my knee pointed up the middle, all right? So I'm pointing my knee like up into his body. So if he's trying to turn into me hard and sit up, it makes it really, really hard. It's just like a war of attrition here. I'll grind my knee and I got my foot planted on the mat over here, gripped up on the gi here, and it's gonna be really hard for him to turn into me. So from here, guys, I'm letting my elbow just slide almost all the way to the mat, 
all right, on this side. I'm bearing down very heavy. As I do this, my knee turns further and further out, all right? And then eventually, guys, I'm just gonna get to a point on this side where my arm's on the floor here, all right? It's closed, it's wedged around his hip. Let's turn that. So look, guys, my arm on this side has come from a position where we're more neutral. Boom, I started here. One, two, pulling my body in, pulling my body in. As Coach Matt fights to that hip, I keep that inside position, flare my elbow out if I need to, to beat his leg. I let my elbow just sort of get to the mat here, all right? And I just close it. Once I have this, I can let go of his gear, whatever I had. I'm just on the mat here, closed. All right, Coach Matt, it's really hard for you to like move yeah. at this point, right? I'm just nice and solid. From here, guys, finishing your knee, that's the easiest thing in the world. All right, let my knee project out. Then we get hit to hip to hip, walk those hips back. I can stay low on the hips like this if I want. Just kind of hugging. I can get head and arm, get parallel. I can walk to north south. Start thinking about mounting, whatever you guys want from there. But just like beating the knee shield, like in advance, is what I'm trying to do there. So again, from this angle, so you guys can see, I'm making my way into headquarters. Maybe I'll press in a little bit. All right, boom, get into this position, nice and strong. All right, so my first salvo, guys. I'm gripping the lapel, getting my hand on the hip down here somewhere, inside my own leg. That way, Coach Matt, once he starts fighting, remember, if he doesn't fight, boom, we smash, all right? If he's gonna fight, he's gonna open his knee, all right? He's thinking about it, but I'm already inside. Go to my knee cut, I beat him already, guys. My elbow's headed towards the mat, headed towards the mat, headed towards the mat. Close the doors here, all right? Once I'm in this position, pulling this guy in, I can stay on the lapel here, I can move to the head if it's close enough, if I want to do that. I just finished my knee cut, guys. Walk the hips out. Boom. I'm in good shape. So, um, like I said, we, we're showing this stuff. You guys go back and watch it if you need to. Look at the details, ask questions. But that, that's one of the ways that I like to enter, guys. That's my platform. I'll work from there. We got <laughs> Burton has a mohawk. Nice. Twitch affiliate is lit. Thank you. Thank you, Terror Storm. <laughs> one. Terror Storm One. I love Jeff's name, guys. It's like it's like a you know, 14-year-old on Xbox. It's like talking bad about your mom after they kill you on like Call of Duty. That's that that's what kind of username that is. Love it. Too edgy for you. <laughs> Alright. Alright, what do we got next, man? Alright. Do we um, want to talk about Smash Pass or I think we should, you yeah. Know? Um and another thing I want to talk about, uh, so definitely an undoing of this position is uh, the lasso. Yes. So like the lasso can cause us a lot of problems in this position. Actually, let's just let's talk about smash pass first. Okay, we'll go smash yeah. pass, and then we'll talk about troubleshooting yeah, yeah, yeah. the lasso. All right, guys. So um, the way I like to do this, so you can go directly to the smash pass, just like Coach Tim said. I mean, it's there, right? So straight away, um, that's a fantastic option. This also works if your knee cut doesn't work out, right? right. So, um, so say I do my my knee push, and then like I I redirect to, to knee cut, and like what what is his his, his reaction is probably going to be to bring his knee back in the center line. Yes. He so if, if my if my knee cut fails. Uh, and like he's like bringing his knee back, I can use that momentum to push to the other side. Um, so that's that's a really good way. It's like you can chain all three of these together, right? So uh, I try to push, this fails. I try to knee cut, that fails. That's a good way to get to the smash pass. It's just kind of a progression. Like you've resisted every single path I've done, and I've taken what you've given me. I've redirected it. I've kind of used your efforts against you. Um, when we're in this position, I like to finish with this horse collar grip, right? So, if you look, I'm grabbing Co uh, Coach Tim's lapel right at the back of the neck here, and I'm cinching it down. All right, this really, really restricts mobility. All right, to clear my to clear the legs, I focus. I like to. F I've seen there's a, there's a lot of ways to deal with this. I like to focus on the top leg. I like to smash it. So I have my horse collar and my smash. I'm just gonna flip fight here. So. I'm gonna windshield wiper my leg over and pass the guard. Um, 
a lot of times this can turn into like a back take, a scramble. The person doesn't want to concede, right? So we take advantage of that. Um, that's kind of my approach. So like straight away, I prefer the knee cut. I think it's just a cleaner finish, but like, uh, you know, I think it combines super well. It does, it does. I like the smash pass flat too, guys. Um, I think it's probably easier to show smash lay if you have your head's pointed that way. Where you guys can kind of just see how we're walking into this. Um, same thing, guys. Straight away is there a lot of the times. I'm here, like I said, this guy doesn't move. Boom. I'm just going to smash pass him. For me, a lot of the time, guys, what I'm going to do, all right, so Coach Matt uh, took, a, took a great approach. He like anchored himself in uh, however he wants to. You can horse collar uh, back on the backside. You can grip the gi here. You can attach to the head, whatever you want to do. And of course, you can windshield wiper and go in this direction. A lot of times what I'll do is anchor myself with this arm to the lapel, put my head in the shoulder to flatten the person out, and then I'll control the bottom leg, which you guys can't see. So this hand, it's just on the bottom leg down here, right? It may be like at the, the material at the back of the knee, it may be on top, it may be just at the very end of the leg. It really doesn't matter. All I'm doing is picking it up off of the floor so Coach Matt can't use it to shrimp, okay? So again, I'm here, I just smashed very quickly. Attach, attach, press the shoulder with the head, and my forehead's just going right into the shoulder, guys. I'm not like driving into the head because remember what we talked about before. Coach Matt's shoulder is still off the mat and he can still turn into me. This might hurt, but a tough guy doesn't care about that. He's just gonna grit his way through this. He's gonna keep his angle. So what I'm actually doing is here. I wanna mechanically flatten those shoulders while pulling the gi in. And from here, I'm just gonna walk. So Coach Matt will fight me with his legs, fight, fight, fight. I walk here, all right? This feels pretty bad. Coach Matt will probably tell you. From here, what you do is up to you, all right? A lot of times I'll just pick the legs up, bring them back this way. Sometimes I'll keep walking, go to north, south, all right? Sometimes I've walked all the way around. If the person's especially flexible and they're being difficult, a lot of guys can just like reach mm -hmm. over the top of you with their, with their leg and still get connected somehow, which is annoying. So I'll just walk around to the other side. So you got two great directions uh, you can go there uh, when you're smash passing. One other thing really quick I'll mention is Coach Matt talked about chaining these together is super important so say i whip to the knee cut this guy's knee is tight so i go back and i smash all right a lot of times you end up like with your knee through here or something like that when you smash pass and this is fine too a lot of times this person's strong they'll open this knee up right they'll, they'll grip up yeah and they're doing this and you're like how the is this guy so strong that he's like lifting and turning me back this way dude, just by at <laughs> Mark's just the whole time you're just like what the hell dude, dude? You. so but the answer to this is like not easy or simple, but there's a good answer to it. And I actually got to see, oddly enough, I got to see JT do this to Abmar at New York Open. It was really interesting. And for us, it was super interesting to see because we are students at that point. You know, I think we're purple or brown belts and we, we roll with Abmar all the time. So we've been getting killed by this over and over and over. So during the tournament, Abmar ends up in the same position. He opens his knee. JT quickly switched his feet and just whipped back to his knee cut, like really, really hard, all right? And then from here, he just like, boom, he was in there, dude, and he passed. And like, uh, it, it's rare to see Admar get his guard passed. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was a really interesting solution that I saw, but really what it is is just chaining, all right? You go mm -hmm. back and forth with your opponent. You knee cut, they defeat that, you smash. They defeat the smash, you whip back into the knee cut. And you go back over and over again, guys. Like, how many reps of that can you do? That's hard. Mm -hmm. Coach Matt's struggling there. I'm just sort of moving my feet. This is agility passing. Mm -hmm. I'm testing my endurance. Uh, I guess I'm testing my cardio, but not really like my muscular endurance. I'm not like gripping mm -hmm. super tightly. I'm not tired from doing that. My muscles aren't getting weaker at that point. I'm just moving, moving, moving. Yeah, if you guys, if you guys like this position, um, you have to be able to chain all these together. So yeah, I'm a, a drill I've done in my class before. Maybe uh, you take you, you done before Coach Tim, but. We're, we're gonna cycle through the three positions over and over again. So, guys. This is not fun, guys. <laughs> this one sucks, dude. It, it challenges the lungs and it challenges the legs. So, I set it to the, the normal knee cut, back to headquarters, backside knee cut. So we, we chain these together over and over again. 
eventually it'll feel very natural to you being in any phase of that. Um, you know, it's, it's super, super important to be able to do that. Right. And then guys, I have one other thing to show from this position. I, I'm running my mouth a lot because this is one of my favorite positions, guys. I, I work from here a lot. So this one of man, we're supposed to run. We're, we're actually supposed to just keep on talking, guys. So one last thing, guys, that I'll do from the smash pass position, um, and, and we alluded to it earlier, is I'm here, I decide to smash for whatever reason, whether I'm coming off of my knee cut or not. Doesn't really matter, right? Maybe I go straight forward, maybe it was off of a knee cut. But I like to take this knee a lot of the times, guys, and shove it through the middle of my opponent's leg. So I'm basically doing like a weed style pass just with my leg instead of my hands, right? So I whip over here, I smash, and my knee ends up through. What you guys will notice if Coach Matt opens his legs, and I move back a little bit here, my knee is projected through the middle, but my, my instep is still at his knee pit or on his, his calf or something back here, all right? If I, if I just go through here, I'm in a bad position, guys. If Matt was a leg locker, I could be knee, knee barred or heel hooked or be put in the saddle or something like that. He can easily open his knee and get me off balance here. All of this stuff I don't want, guys, all right? So I'm keeping my knee projected forward, but my instep on the other side. Makes it really difficult for Coach Matt to do any of that stuff. Same stuff applies, guys. I might have my hand here or something. Remember, this serves as an underhook, even though it's not technically an underhook. My elbow's projected forward down here. I can just drop my hand, close the door back here if I want to do that, all right? You know, or I can just have a regular underhook. But honestly, wedging across down by the hips and along the back, I think is much stronger. Allows for a lot more pressure. My other hand's doing the same thing we talked about earlier. I'm just attaching to either the gi, rotating my partner in, or attaching to his head and doing the same thing, guys. All right? So what I like to do a lot from here, instead of worrying about windshield wipering and this type of stuff, is this, my top leg will go behind, and I'll just walk Coach Matt's leg to a, a really, really just uh, uncomfortable position here, guys. So I'm anchored. I've walked his leg up. All right. What happens a lot is as you take pressure off of that and drive forward, that leg sort of goes back. You see how it sort of went from here to here? It's almost like a little reaction that's going to happen. Coach Matt is not flexible enough to just keep his leg up by his head here. So when I move my foot here, it's going to kind of go back this way, which is sort of what we want. When that happens, guys, with this connection here, or like I said, the head connection, as his leg moves, my chest projects forward. Now I'm going to take my knee here put it right next to his hip, all right? Now we're in this position, if you guys can see, move your arm really quick, where my hips are, where my hips are just in position to mount, all right? So what I like to do from here, guys, once I'm in this position, I've dropped my knee, I really like, I'm kind of like hitting them in the hip with my knee here, I just grind forward, grind forward, walk to mount, all right? Do this all the time, really, really strong maneuver. You just got seven points, right? So again, we're here, boom, whatever we're doing, we decide to smash pass for some reason, all right? Smash here in this position, all right? My knee's projected forward, but my instep is not over his leg. From here, making sure I'm anchored tight, guys. Don't lose this. My leg comes backwards and I try to walk this forward, all right? As high as I can. Make it uncomfortable. It's an uncomfortable stretch, all right? Attach to the head if you want, or you can just keep your hand here. And then look, guys, forward, forward, forward. Drop your knee to the hip. Got a lot of pressure on his head too, all right? This is pretty bad. A lot of guys will just kind of turn their head away from you just to make, give him some space, all right? And once I'm here, guys, I'm just walking him out. Keeping chest to chest the whole time. I think that's a super important transition that you have to know and be good at. Um, it's a good threat to have, all right? Even if you don't quite get there, a lot of times you'll end up in just quarter, three quarters mount, which is basically, you can start attacking yourself from there. You know, your mileage may vary, works really, really well for me. Like I said, even if you don't get completely to the mount, you're in like really, really strong attacking platform. Four, three quarters guard is really nothing, to be honest. Yeah, that's uh, that's great stuff. And like, like Coach Tim said, your mileage may vary. That's like one thing I love about the headquarters position is it really is a system mm -hmm. and like things chain together. And um, it's like, it's like if you told your it's like if you told your your mom you're you're bored or something yeah. when you're young. It's like you you should never be bored, right? You should never 
you should never like not know what to do in headquarters. Right. Like you know what to do, you know what your objective is. It's it's whether you've put in enough work and you're good enough at it to execute it. So right. like we know where we're going with it, which is it's good stuff. Nice, great details, big fan. We got someone from Lane Kids Club. From uh, Alessandro from Master Skya. Oh, he's a blue belt. Uh, he came in. What's up, man? He came in um, over Thanksgiving. So. Oh, great, man! Cool. Very, very cool. Uh, let's see. Mike says, "Can you talk about controlling opponent's right arm hand or hand in headquarters?" Um, Mike, when you say the right arm or hand, I'm assuming you mean. Um, are you talking about the hand that's on the, the shin side, like the shin we're putting weight on, or the, or the off hand, like the far hand? So the one on the shin side? So I don't, I don't control it. I don't control I mean, it at all, guys. Like this hand, this hand, I don't care about unless I'm trying to set up like a rolling board or something like that, which is a total different situation. So if we turn this way, Guys, there is a movement I'll do sometimes. All right, I'm here. I'm in headquarters, all right? Uh, maybe I just want to try something. Maybe I'm out of time, right? I need to try a submission or I just want to set this up. I feel like I can get it on the guy and I have control of the hand here. Matt may be hand fighting, whatever. I was able to staple this hand. So I'll do the same thing, guys. Grip to the lapel, project my weight forward. And all I'm going to do from this position, I'm going to pick Coach Matt up a little bit. And when I'm ready, I'm just going to roll over the shoulder. So I'm going to go here. To this position. From here, all I'm doing is taking the hand, pushing it to the hip, all right, rolling to my belly. That's what I prefer to do. Now, some guys will wait here. If you wait here, belly out, a lot of times guys will, will come towards you. So, Coach Matt will roll towards me, and then you can slide behind me and start taking it back. For me, I like to just be proactive, guys. I turn to my belly here, push this hand to the hip, come up, take my Kimura position. So, um, Mike, that's the only reason I might control that hand if I'm thinking about that movement. Um, otherwise, I'm not, I don't even care about so it. So the, the, what I think about the hands is, in terms of controlling them, uh, the return on investment is not very good. Right. Uh, so like if I'm in this headquarters position, I get a lot more bang from my buck using my hands to fight his legs or like bring him off the ground. Right. Um, controlling the hand, like the, the most ideal with the hands is like, if he has a grip that's bothering me, I'll like break. I'll be breaking his grip, but I'm not gonna be like um, really fighting the hands too much. I I get a lot more out of like fighting the legs, and that, that was what I was gonna go over next, actually. So yeah, guys, yeah. And, and like if we're wrong about that, if there's some other move that you know of, let us know. The only one I know of that's viable, and like I said, that's just an attempt for me. It's sort of like Matt's pushing the knee through, or me trying my mm -hmm. double like straight to mount move. I think it's like 10%. I'm not mm -hmm. even really like basing my game off of a roll and more from this position. Mm -hmm. So typically I'm worried about anchoring to the gi, getting my hips in position, getting their legs in position so I can start passing. Because mm -hmm. I know I can submit somebody if I get the side control or I get to mount or whatever. Uh, but here's, I don't know. Yeah. And like for, um, it's a different story when we're talking floating passing. Right. That's a lot more effective, right? If, if my if my, my weight, we're doing like no gi and I'm trying to pass this way, my weight's over somebody, Okay, I get an effective control here. My hips being so far away, my weight being back, right? An effective headquarters, uh, an effective headquarters, like my weight's kind of back. I can't really project much force on his hand. Yeah, yeah I can Kimura him, but you know, control is, is gonna be hard to do, so. Anytime he reaches forward, guys, he's looking at my hand here. Even if I only have just this side to grip, like reach forward, he's gotta lean, right? I'm a good guard player, I'm gonna start moving because he, he gave me that opportunity. I don't know. Again, it's what we were talking about earlier. We have this strong connection here. He's got so much pressure on me in, in headquarters. As soon as he relieves some of that, I all of a sudden feel, yeah, I can kick this guy all of a sudden. You know, so I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to, if I'm committing weight forward, I like to do it all the way, right? right? I'm either back in my headquarters, setting up my next pass, or I'm like totally committed, both hands on the mat, or like a hand on a wrist, hand on the mat. Um, just, you don't want to be between two minds there. That's yeah. how you Even if my hand's close, guys, go ahead and staple my wrist, guys. 
Look how far he's got to come out of his base to do that. It's just a risk. Yeah, you know? my torso. But All right. Not good. We don't want that. So, like, you got 20 seconds left, guys? You got to try something? Yeah. There's Kimura's a cool roll with Kimura from there. But I, don't, great. I don't know, man. I don't know how good it is otherwise. Yeah. In the other scenario. All right. So, um, what I wanted to... Yeah, all right. Cut yeah, just, <laughs> stretch my knee here for a sec. So, we have uh, pretty much all the passes we've done. We've had, like, upper body control. We've just dominated that leg with our leg. Great. Um, we need to address, and I, I use this just as much as I do the other stuff. Address maybe people who are longer, people who have good hip flexibility, and they can whip a, uh, you know, whip a lasso in. So if I'm rolling with somebody and like this, my knee, my my dominance on his leg just isn't getting it done for some reason. He grips up my my sleeve, and I get an indication he might be trying to lasso exactly. I'm going to switch, right? So. I go from the collar, or Coach Tim like had his underhook. We're gonna switch from there to the pants. So I get the pants, then my other hand is gonna go from the leg, and I go across his neckline. All right, I go thumb in, and I sit like this. Right, so I kind of like sprawl my hip. All right, so what do you feel here, Coach Tim? This is awful, guys. My hip is open in a really uncomfortable way on this side, and he still has. He still has the uh, headquarters position on my shin. It's just my foot's being pushed sort of to my cross butt cheek. It's just like a, a more awful, you know, position for me. I, there's a lot of pressure here. Guys, so uh, that's exactly right. Um, there's every bit as much pressure, if not more, but like this leg is truly, truly dominated. Now there's no, there's no laps out there, which is good. So we're just gonna do a basic hip switch here, all right? I'm gonna like float into position. I'm gonna do a, a very quick hip. So like my hips are gonna, all, you, gotta, you gotta trust this, okay? Uh, don't half-ass it, you'll just get dumped to your side. I'm gonna like, my hips are almost gonna face the ceiling. I'm gonna just slide off of this leg and then I'm hip heisting immediately back to the mat. So um, something I see when people do this, they get, they get too shook, they're, not, they're too afraid to commit, they do it half-ass. They start turning this way, yep. and they just get dumped, right? We don't want to do that. We want to do, dare I say, an explosive movement. Oh my <laughs> god, dude. <laughs> so we're here. So look, my hips are like facing the ceiling here. From here, I hip heist back. All right? This is just a hip switch pass. Um, super effective, right? So we're here. I'm kind of here dominating this leg. My hips are like, you know, you gotta really commit to clear that leg. You're not gonna do it just trying to like tilt and fall off of it. Right. A person with a brain, a person with a pulse, they're gonna dump you to the side. Gotta be a quick movement, guys. Um, which it was there. That, that's explosive. It's gotta be explosive, guys. But even if you're more like, you know, hardworking athlete, um, you can develop that explosiveness with practice, guys. Remember, like, a lot of moves like appear explosive you see them you know like one of your favorite grapplers doing them a lot of that's just practice you know a lot of things that appear really really fast um appear that way just because the timing is really good mm -hmm. you know I, i've like um you know gotten single legs that to me were very slow and then when i watched them on video they were very slow um and you know had the my competitor tell me man that was really fast it wasn't it was just mm -hmm. i did it at the right time i caught mm -hmm. them stepping towards me you know, or something like that, and it just appeared very quickly. So, you know, if you're worried about like, man, I'm not that explosive, I'm not that fast, think about timing, think about ways that you can speed up your movement, movement with just by having good position and good preparation. Yeah, having to do less yeah. makes things appear a lot faster. So Dom asked, um, like, controlling the body uh, in headquarters in no gi. Exactly what Tim showed, the way he just does it in the gi anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so I had the lapel with the with the, the outside hand pulling up. Coach Tim uh, underhooks with the torso. Yeah, guys, look, so, like, you don't need a gi to do this. I'm in headquarters, this, boom, I'm here. This, My hand's just here, guys. Yeah, this is the no gi approach uh, if you're gonna play headquarters. Right, I'm here. Again, I'm still like staying nice and heavy. I'm not like up on my toes just yet, um, although that's a viable passing strategy. All right, I'm just here. I'm looking to knee cut, so when I knee cut, I don't want this leg bothering me. All right, that's it. This is pure nogi, guys. 
instead of gripping like, you know, a sleeve or something here to finish my pass, I'd probably go to the head, project, finish my knee cut in whatever way I'd like. You know, some people cut their hips way out. A lot of times I just sort of use pressure here and get my knee along the side of the body, you know, to walk the hips back, whatever you want. In no gi though, I would recommend you stay as tight as possible. So I think in no gi, a lot of the times you see this kind of stuff, right? Like guys go to some position like that, or maybe they just go for the underhook. And then like, this is no gi, dude, you didn't keep nothing here. This guy's gonna scramble, and then you're like, man, all right, I didn't get it. So instead of doing that, guys, finish your knee cut nice and tight. Boom, here, get attached to the head. Look what I'm gonna do. Instead of cutting my hips way out, away from my opponent, where you can get away from me, closing the door on the side, boom, nice and tight. And look, I'm just gonna stretch my knee out. Boom, this is awesome. There's no scramble here, all right? No gi is hard enough. Don't make it more difficult on yourself by, by just constantly having a bunch of space Wild between out. your hips and their hips. All right. Also, Tim, what is behind your left ear? It's a band-aid, guys. I got like a little ingrown hair there. Um, I'm just covering it up, that's it. Wow, that's different from what I've been doing. Okay, good. Guys, the man cleaned up his mouth today, it's a band-aid, so. <laughs> Yeah, dude, it's pretty, it's on there, man. I don't know. This is like a Cars Band-Aid that I stole from Teddy's bathroom. And uh, it's stuck, man. It's stuck, it's stuck on there. Good. It's good, good stuff. It's good. Uh, it's well made. All right. Um, so, knee cut, smash, hip switch. Um, we did the transition and mount. We talked about gripping. Yep. Um, what else, man? So, I really like to use this to set up, like, uh, underpassing man so yeah. i saw uh uh if all your systems aren't working like what are we doing you know um if none of our traditional routes are, are working uh what what, what what do we do and um i saw who was it it was a match to pan ams i saw um it's the soul fighters guy that knocked the used to oh fight against all the time rafael barbosa yeah, 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 Formiga. Formiga, yeah, yeah. I saw Formiga do this, um, and it was like he was sitting in the headquarters for a long time, um, just could not find a way through, and finally uh, he was able to just switch the entire, you know, switch the entire pace of like what he was doing. And right. I thought it was really impressive, and it, it inspired me to like um, try that out a little bit more. So, did he move to like over unders? Like, yeah, so the way he did it was. He's sitting in this like traditional headquarters position, just like nothing is working for him. Knee cut, smash. Uh, the guy on bottom was super, super tough. Really game, really good guard. So all he did here was uh, he just kind of like grabbed the uh, grabbed the outside of the pants here. All right, from what I can tell, uh, he used it to kind of like raise himself up, and he just stepped inside. All right, opened the person's base up, and from here. He went into like this oh this uh this smash pass, right? Yeah. So man, like uh this this type of passing, it just it switches into like whatever you want it to. Yeah. Guys, I, we like over under here. Um, our old coach Dave was really good at over under. There's a position that he studied a lot uh, as well, so he knew a lot of like kind of tricks from there um, that he passed along to us. I, I've always liked the position as just sort of a a backstop. It's one of the ways that I just approach open guard, all right, outside of headquarters. A lot of times I'll just try and get straight there. You know, it's one of the things I'll try. Like, and I roll it, he may be seated or whatever he's doing. You get a lot of guys that are like this. So we talk about knee and hip pin a lot, right? I'm walking the hips down or something like this, or I'm trying this as a first salvo. One of the first things I'll do, you know, a lot of times like switching directions here, this guy's got sticky hooks and stuff. It ain't gonna work, man. Like this is just gonna be difficult to even get back to the side. This guy's gonna just put his legs in your way just enough that you can't move cleanly like you want. So one of the answers, at least once you've walked the hips flat, is to just go to over under, which I do a lot. I like this position now, inside of mass uh, hips here. Yes, yeah, sir. And he can fight me here, guys, but uh, 
the zip rope, right? All I gotta do is kind of get my legs in the right place, start stapling, you know, my knees to the mat, start gripping on the head, stuff like this. Grab my belt, grab the belt, I can start stacking, make them respond to this. You know, I have a lot of great options from there. Um, and I'll let Matt share those since he got messed up with running. And I don't, but um, yeah, over under, man. Really, really strong passing position. It's great. And uh, like you got, you, when you have guys, just like Coach Tim said, people with like really good dexterity in their hips, people that can invert. Yeah. Like it's hard to invert if somebody is under your hips, right. under your hips. When you're used to being under other people, um, just, just flipping that paradigm helps out a lot. So I was going to say too, uh, maybe it'd, it'd be helpful before we get into sort of like specific methods here to talk about like, all of the little ways a good guard player is gonna fight you guys. Um, a lot of times the guard player can fight you in such a way that you're just stuck in headquarters. I thought it was really uh, you know, good that you mentioned that Formiga, who's a great jujitsu player, this guy's amazing at jujitsu, was just stuck in headquarters in such a long time. Why? When you think about it, like what am I gonna try to do here? Coach Matt gets me to headquarters. Okay, we've talked about how dominant this position is gonna uh, can be. That doesn't mean I'm just going to quit, right? What it really means is as he's starting to push, for example, I feel his weight come up, all right? He wants to push my knee. I might do something as simple as to bring your weight up, just this. Now Coach Matt has to reset. I feel his hand on my leg. I might just move it, all right? He starts trying to smash. Nope, I'm going to turn my hips just a little bit. He starts trying to knee cut. Nope, I'm just doing something as stupid as like blocking his knee, guys. Pull it on my collar. Because I know what the options are. I know he's going to knee cut, he's going to smash, you know, or something like that, or he's going to try to get over my head and float. I know what he's going to do. So I can, like, frustrate him in all these, like, tiny ways such that, like, he could waste, like, two, three, four minutes here just sort of, like, mm -hmm. trying to get me, you know, to stop doing all this stupid little stuff. So sometimes it is better to just switch directions, guys, switch your mode of passing. This guy looks like, man, this guy knows everything I'm trying to do from here. Switch it up, all right? Don't waste too much of your time, all right? That can get you frustrated. That can get you in like a mindset where you're making mental errors trying to like force the issue. Like sometimes the person is just game. They're savvy in the mm -hmm. position you're in as well, and you gotta move to something else, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, for sure. And guys, like, like what, what Coach Tim was saying there, um, the good thing about headquarters, even if you don't get the pass, it's pretty hard to get swept outright from here. Um, you know, if you need points, you need a pass, you know, this position cannot guarantee you a pass, right? Um, it's a good, like, headquarter, like, I can chill here for an entire match, you know what I mean? Right. You're, like, the person on bottom will get more tired than me. I can almost guarantee that. I'm stressed um, just sitting here, guys. Yeah, like, guys, I it's, rest my leg just guys, like, like what, what happens is, if you've never experienced prolonged uh, headquarters on, on the bottom, the leg that is being dominated, right? The leg that's being sat on gets super cooked, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, guys, your leg will get like so, so tired. I'll um, even show you guys where it is. It's right here, man. Like, this, you know, your muscles that help you like extend your leg, like in your quad, like this muscle in particular, right on the inside of your knee, just gets destroyed. It turns into jello. Like, if it makes it really hard for you to even straighten your leg, your opposite leg, from being pushed open, you get all this stress on your, your inner groin and like your hip flexor here. Mm -hmm. So this gets tired. So you get in a situation where even if you like kick this guy off of you and stand up, you're like, oh, <laughs> dude. You know, like it's hard for you to, to like wrestle or do anything just because oh, you've been man. cooked for so long. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that, that shit's real, guys, for sure. <laughs> all right, so let's go back to what you're talking anyways, about. Here. Anyways, I'm going to talk about people like sort of fighting you, like using like sort of micro. Yeah, like I'm just, I need points. Uh, you know, the match is winding down. I need to make an impression, uh, at least get an advantage. It's, it's tight. I'm just, it hasn't worked for six minutes. There's no indication it will work the last minute of the match. So I'm just going to step into this middle space. So... Um, really important that both, right, both of our, our, our legs are going to be in the middle now. So everything else stays the same. Like I still want to dominate this, uh, this leg over here with my leg. All right. The only thing I'm going to do when I raise my hip up, I'm going to circle my knee in. So now I'm like double inside. All right. Um, and even here, you don't have to necessarily go double under. Um, you know, we can start, we can knee cut to either side from here. 
But the way I saw it applied, and it was impressive to me, was it was from this double under position. So uh, we're just going to finish the uh, we're just going to finish the the underpass. So what I want to do here, I want to get my my shoulder behind Coach Tim's leg. All right. I like to uh, I like especially in the gi. If if we have the gi, I like to utilize it. All right. I go across. I don't like to grab up here because it's just like very open. And you guys pushing, getting their knees in. I like to grab more at the hip, and I close my elbow down like this. So if Coach Tim is trying to push, it's gonna be really difficult. Um, really basic one I'll, I'll go with, guys. I'm just gonna go on my, my tiptoes here. I'm not even gonna go full pressure. Coach Tim and I aren't that warm, right? So we're just here, I'm driving my weight in. Um, I get the back of the pants, I get the belt, and I just, that, that stretch reflex Tim, Coach Tim talked about before when he's going around the back, you know, stretching my leg out. What happens when I turn my chest, his leg is just gonna go by because his, I'm forcing him beyond his active range of motion. He's in passive range of motion here. So I'm just gonna square my chest towards the zip. His leg, his leg, his, his muscles are gonna do the work of bringing his leg by for me because I'm being stretched too far in this direction. Like, if I were just doing this on my own, I can't even bring my leg up that high. He's pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. So when he turns and allows, like, my muscles, like, some place to relax, my leg just sort of does that naturally. Like, my whole body wants that to happen. This simple is the best way I can describe it. Simple as that, guys. So the way it relates to the headquarters, again, all of our systems have kind of, like, been failing us. I grab the inside. I grab the outside, whatever you need to get. Circle my knee in. I'm going under. I want to. Ideally, I like to stack the person up like this. I'm not going to do that right now. You can, but okay. So I really like to stack the person up like this. So like a lot of times you get kicking reactions here. They're like push away, you know. Trying to. Ugh. That's how you finish a house, man. That's good, man. Stack them up, guys. Stretch them out. Make them do that involuntary, like kind of split motion, and then just. Just roast them, guys. Drop them. Like once you get your chest projected past, that leg's gonna drop. And then from there, it's not over, guys. We talked about this last class too, right? Make sure you're anchoring to the, to the lapel or grabbing the head, closing your arms around their body, walking to the north-south if you need to, stuff like that. Just making sure that you're getting your three, you know, getting to that side control position. If it's sub only, even you still need those dominant positions to score. Yeah, needs to improve her knee cut. No, I think she's good. <laughs> Would an X-Pass chain in, uh, ch yes, it, it absolutely does. Of course, yeah. Yeah, so the way that looks is, um, and this is the way like the, uh, the Mendez brothers play this, so. Because they right? want leg drag all the time. Like, right? yeah. like they'll, they'll, they'll sit here, but like, I like to like put a shitload of pressure. The Mendez brothers, they're like a lot looser here, right? They're, uh, they're like more standing like this, so like, yes. Absolutely, X pass works here. Um, you can see people; they stand up, they'll like step off to like a torgando. Yeah. So like, your agility passing can uh, come from this as well. So like, for me, you could have just as well, uh, you know, grabbed the pants, stepped out, and started, you know, bullfighting, torgando, X pass, leg drag. Um, this is this is like a jumping off point for really any. Passing that I mean, guys, that's why the name headquarters is perfect. It's it's you can go it's a you choose go your anywhere from HQ. Story, you choose your strategy from HQ, and then you you know you execute your war from there. Um, I, I will say, I think you see less of that stuff. Uh, if you, you were talking about for me, it was probably at you know pans like in the Masters Division or Masters World, something like that. Um, you know, th those agility options just become less fun for you to do as you get older. Um, I can still X pass, I can still Toriando when I need to, but to be honest, I prefer to just pressure pass at this point because it's easier on my body. You know, making those big movements, I'm like, I'm more likely to pull a hamstring or something than I was in the past. Like, you do a good X pass, man, you know, you gotta like, you gotta move, guys. Like, you got the donkey kick. Yeah, yeah. you gotta do like, ugh, I might pull my hammy there, dude. I, don't, I might not just wanna do that anymore. It's not that I can, I just like don't want to. So I think you see a change in strategy yeah. uh, as the age of the competitor goes up. So, And you look, you look at the guys, uh, the guard retention against some of those agility passing, you know, 
if a, if a guard pass happens, it's attempt eight or nine. So like it's switching yeah. sides and like, man, you gotta be healthy, you gotta be durable, you have to have a fucking motor. Be fit. Um, but man, not not telling anybody not to do that stuff. Just um, that's that's good to uh, put that in perspective. I'm a big fan of the Mendez brothers, even guys, and I've noticed like one thing they do on their site um, and on their YouTube channel is they post a lot of live rolling, which I, which is really good. It's uh, I appreciate it because they they do things in such a unique way a lot of mm -hmm. the times. It's just good to watch them, um, see see what they're up to. Uh, they're they're sort of like mad scientists now that they're not competing anymore. I notice they don't do like a ton. A shit ton of like hardcore agility mm -hmm. passing anymore. Uh, Marcelo is a guy that used to do that all the time. Yeah. You don't see Marcelo running from left to right like he used to anymore, guys. I, I, that does happen over time. So just keep that in mind. You're an older competitor. You're an older person just starting jujitsu. You know you kind of got to pick your style. Pick your style, and a lot of times that's going to depend on like how fast you can move, like how your lower back's feeling and stuff like that. Another yeah. thing about that agility passing is like. As opposed to in here, where I'm in a stable position for my back, my back is straight here. Now, I'm really passing the Toriando pass, and I think we need to be more leaned over, right? I can't like hardcore Toriando or agility pass or X pass when I'm like in this position, this squatting, squatted down position, right? I need to be like more loose here. That's harder on my lower back, guys. This is like a wrestling stance on this. It hurts, all right? So if you got a bad lower back, that might not be the best strategy for you to take. Um, yeah, it's up to you though, guys. Like, you know, do whatever works for you. Some of you, some of you guys are in super good shape despite your age. Um, I, again, I'm in pretty good shape, but I've had back trouble. You know, so it is what it is. 100% right. Let's see. Mia didn't have a knee to knee cut with for a long time. True. I still saw her get second at Masters Worlds with that with that knee though, guys. That boat sailed. <laughs> Wrestle and stall until they're tired. Exactly, Brad. Like I said, when I do stall camp, we'll work on all of those techniques. It's hilarious. <laughs> Jesus. All right, guys. Uh, I don't see any, any technical questions about this stuff. Um, if you have them, please let us know. Matt, do you know the, like, the over-under pass where you staple the knee and then back step through? I almost yeah. want to show that just so people have that option. I don't want to do it to you because mm -hmm. you're going, but you can do it to yeah, me. Yeah, sure, sure. So, guys, here's another just method you can use to pass uh, using the over-under position when, when you can get it. Yeah, and these, these like the one I showed where you're coming around the side, these chain together really well. Right. So, like, like sometimes when you get that initial position, so Coach Matt did this, right? Sometimes you can't get that. Why? The person understands frames, for example. So as you're bringing your hips around and trying to project your chest forward, they understand what's happening. So they're straightening this leg really tough. Some guys are just strong lower body, and they're mm -hmm. posting on your hip back here. So you ain't going to get it. So here's where Coach Matt's going to go and say He's blocked on this side, plus I'm pushing him away with my leg. He's going to bring his knee in over my thigh and staple it to the floor, guys. All right? This sucks, all right? <laughs> now I'm in this position where he's going to project his chest forward basically just make me do a, a split here. He's gonna attach to my head here, and then he's just gonna do a big back step through now. Boom, all right? See how he leaves his leg draped over mine down here? All right, this is perfect. That way my, my shrimping leg here that I need to move my hips if I wanted to is, is at least frustrated, it's weighted down. Now at his leisure, he's gonna just complete the back step. All right? Yeah, guys, I like to uh, switch switch these hooks. So like Coach Tim said, I like to keep this stapled. If you're able to, just replace. You can go under, if you have the flexibility. I've seen people go over like this. Either way it works. Um, we just wanna keep that leg dominated until we're past. Right. Or you can be really quick. You know, if you're feeling more agile, you're up on your toes, you can just run to the head. You run into a side. Yeah, this can be a game, just like all the other stuff we were, we were talking about, you know? Like, I try to go to my left, he blocks. I go to my right, he blocks. Oh, let me go back to the left. So, like, you'll see that, uh, you know, that that you can wear somebody out that way. Like, guys, also, if I'm putting money on somebody being, like, victorious there, it's going to be the guy in the passing position. Exactly. The person on bottom, they're going to wear out first. Also, don't underestimate, all right, an explosive move there. Uh, that sort of position over under is perfect for that 
especially at the end of a match, you know, you got a minute or two left. Both both players are tired at that point, all right? Unless they're just like cardio monster, just because it's really hard to fight with somebody. Like running doesn't prepare you from like, prepare you exactly for a back and forth with another human being. Like wrestling is one of the most tiring things you can do, or grappling is. Um, so I remember winning a match, uh, what was that, Toro Cup? Like some years that? Um, that same way, guys, we ended up in overtime, all right? Uh, this guy had pretty good guard, I had trouble passing, and I ended up at the very end just getting to this position, all right? I was sorta of in this position, I got to the over-under, and I just went for it, because I knew time was, was low. So I literally just, I threw this thing, all right? And that worked, all right? I threw it so hard, and he was so tired at that particular time after a 20 minute match or whatever we'd had, that just worked. So, you know, you have that option to try and use like some explosiveness or just a big movement uh, to get, get three points very quickly there. So I think that over under type situation is something you should definitely be thinking about towards the end of the match. You need points, you need an advantage. Go for that, man. Like that'll get you the advantage sometimes too, even if they recover, so. Yeah, and that's, that's one of those explosive movements where if you do it, you're already in the pass, right? It's right. not like a, a Toriando where, okay, I got your legs by, now I need to close, you know, close your hips down and right. you're chase there. you and scream. It's like, if it's successful, right. you're, you're just right in the position. Now, he, I, I, I remember so. particularly there, my opponent was smart. Uh, he had to sort of let the pass happen because he was caught by surprise. The mistake I see people make a lot of the times when you throw the leg like that is they turn away. Um, he was smart enough not to get his back taken. If he had turned away from me, it was an easy back take, but he did stay flat and gave me the three instead of the four and, you know, maybe I get choked now. So just think about that, guys. Like, you put your, your opponent in a really bad position just by trying that, you know, by going for it. But you gotta, you gotta commit. Georgia is letting gyms open again. Road trip to Buckhead. Hey, do your thing, bro. Do your thing. Go, man. Um, we, by the way, guys, this might be a good segue to just kind of talk about uh, what time is it? Oh, I mean, I, I'd say we're firmly in Q&A already. I didn't realize this much time had passed. Um, but guys, ask any questions you want. One, two, uh, we'll talk a little bit about, just sort of here on the fly, like what we're thinking about for reopening. Like, uh, we don't know what time frame it's gonna be. Um, we're stuck, I think, the current date here in Virginia is May 8th, um, is when the stay-at-home order, or the not, you know, this non-essential businesses would be allowed to open up, um, theoretically, at that point. Um, we don't know if that's going to be ex uh, extended or not. All of these dates are, ten are tentative. Um, but you got this big push going right now to open, reopen the country, open back up the economy, all of this stuff. Um, and that's fine. So if we are going to reopen, we have to think very hard about how we're going to do that. Um, what's probably going to have to happen is, um, you know, we're going to have to be maniacs about san sanitation you know, uh, sanitizing all surfaces, the door handles on you know, the bathroom, probably banning the water fountain, uh, just because that's an area where a bunch of people will be touching and drinking from, um, having everyone bring their own water. We would probably be assigning people to small groups, a group of two or a group of three. So you have like one partner that you train with all the time, just to kind of minimize um, your contact with, with everyone else in the gym. Um, stuff like that. We may even have to consider teaching more classes for that reason. Like classes may have to be 50 minutes um, just so we can say, okay, only 10 people are allowed in session one, session two, session three, whatever. Um, so just so you guys know, we, we are thinking about this stuff. We'll probably send out something soon, write something up and send it out as an update. Um, and I also want to put like all of the links to our VODs in the email anyway, so we can send it out. Um, but, you know, guys, we're thinking about it. So, you know, it, it's just going to be tough going forward. Uh, the, the thing I really want to say is when we do come back, even if that's mid-May, all right, as soon as mid-May, it's a risk for everyone coming back. You, we're not in the clear yet, guys. Like, this thing is still out there. It's still out there in great numbers. Uh, the numbers of cases are still rising in America. You know, I'm not trying to fear monger or anything, but when you come back to jujitsu, remember, it's just a risk to come back to jujitsu. Yep. Um, to me, jujitsu is... Like the, what it does for my sanity is, is worth the risk. Um, at the same time, just I want you guys to be aware it's a risk. I, I want to be transparent with everyone. I don't want to be one of those people who's like, oh, it's fine, guys, come back. I don't know, you're risking getting COVID anytime you go out and do anything. Yeah, so, guys, politicians are not epidemiologists. They're right. not scientists. Um, Their the, focus the, don't get reelected. Yeah, these, these dates are, are not based in science. They're political. So right. um, 
you know, what, whatever your, your guys' risk tolerance is is going to determine whether you want to come back or not. Yeah. Um, our waiver covers pandemic stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> honestly, guys, I, you guys know I, I, I used to be a lawyer by trade. I'll probably rewrite our, our waiver, to be honest, because of that, because of this. It's a different type of risk. Um, I, it should be covered. Um, but, you know, if I read through the language, I don't know. Maybe it's, va it's too vague. I, I'll probably rewrite it and at least add something specific about, um, you know, this particular illness. So I just want you guys to think about that. Be ready. Be ready for those, uh, you know, those additional safety measures when we come back. I don't know of any mask that's going to actually stay on during training. Uh, you know, you could have sports goggles. You could have a mask on and try to cover your orifices, I guess. Yeah, um, you know. Mucous membranes. But, like, it's just going to be hard, guys. You're going to be at risk. Yep. So you, you make, the, make the choice. You're an adult. Um, like I said, my, my choice will probably be to train. Um, but just know, be ready. You know, if you're feeling, you know, at some point you, you start to feel like you have symptoms or something, like, stay out. Stay home for the hospital. They treat it, they treat it early. Um, I got some crazy news about, like, what's happening to people that do end up in severe conditions. You know, they go to the hospital too late. They're in a situation where they have to get intubated or go to an ICU. They're having really, really horrible long-term outcomes, like you know, severe lung damage, you know, pieces of lung tissue may need to be removed. Uh, you know, some of the, the medicines they have to give you to keep you oxygenated and keep you on an IV that long, like end up with you having to lose a toe or a finger, or, you know, God forbid, a foot or a hand or something like that. So there's some bad shit that can happen if you like get sick and then don't take it seriously. So my point is, if you do start to feel sick, you gotta go get treated immediately. You, know, you have to go take care of it immediately. You gotta talk to us about it. Talk to whoever you're interacting with about it. And, and just, my point is, guys, take the whole thing serious. Matt, I don't know what you have to say about that. I, I, I was, that was kind of long-winded, but you know, it's kind of dominating everyone's life right now. No, no, I mean, uh, that's, that's really all you can say. If you, if you engage in something like jujitsu and this is about, uh, when, when this is still afoot, you are 100% putting yourself at risk. Um, and uh, like Coach Tim said, we haven't completely ironed out, you know, what measures we're going to take or set it in stone. But uh, yeah, like we're we're thinking about it. It's it's certainly on our radar. Things will definitely um, be different. Yeah, we we don't. While. Yeah, and we don't want this to last forever any more than anybody else. Like we're, you know, we would love nothing more to have like full classes of people again and you know the way it was and um, you know with this uh, you know we may need to extend our you know we may need to have like a uh, 5.30 to 6.30 session 6.30 yeah. and you know maybe um, maybe that ends up being like an open mat you know just uh, be prepared for you know training is not going to look the way it was for the foreseeable future right. now at the same time guys um, We'll be here, man. We're gonna be doing our best to like provide you guys with uh, obviously the same level like quality of instruction. That's not gonna change. But like I said, maybe classes are shorter. Maybe there's more classes per day. Whatever. I'm here, man. I'll be. I'm willing to teach all day if I need to. Like I don't care. Uh, I just want to make sure everyone can train on the days that they like to train. So we will make that happen in whatever way we need to. But we'll just have to take some safety precautions going forward. Will the Twitch streams continue into May too? Yes. And, uh, yeah, like, we're having a blast uh, doing this, you know. I would, uh, dude, it would really suck if we didn't at least have this way to connect with you guys. Yeah. And uh, like Coach Tim and I said, uh, this Twitch thing is really cool, like, COVID pandemic aside, for people that are, like, in a, you know, in a jujitsu desert. If they're in a, you know, I don't know about you, I'm happy to, to open, you know, our jujitsu up to the world. But whoever come in and watch it, you know. Um, yeah, guys, I, we're not we're not a we're not a fucking McDojo, dude. Like we had good coaches, like um, coming up. Like I, I, I'm not like afraid to have what I'm teaching out there on the internet. Like you know, I know what I'm doing. Like Matt knows what he's doing. Um, I think a lot of times when people like have their doors like closed or they're scared to teach publicly, that, that's for like some reason. You know, like uh, there are no secrets in jujitsu anymore either. Um, everybody knows all the moves or they have access mm -hmm. to them. So, um, you know, if you have a, a, an appropriate lineage, I don't see why you should have any fear of teaching in front of any any number of people. So I think we'll continue streaming. 
maybe even if it just goes down once a week or once every two weeks, like this kind of thing, where we are sitting here doing live Q and A, that might decrease once we have regular classes going back. But we'll probably stream classes and stuff, yeah, man. Stream open. Back. Um, I think this is cool. Also, this is an opportunity for us. It's pretty rare for us to just sit here and do a knowledge dump on you guys. You know, when we're doing class, we got one or two moves. We got to practice those moves. We have to actually fight each other. Mm -hmm. That takes up a lot of the time. You know, we don't have time to just sit here and talk to you guys about Kamoras for an hour like we did last time. Yeah, that's we got, awesome. We got people coming in, you know, like yeah, drop ins, and it's it's distracting. This is just like a good format. Right. Hey, this is like what what we know. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Also, look, we're uh we're Twitch affiliates now, guys. We're like part of the Twitch uh, family, so. You know, if you uh, you have Amazon Prime or something, you want to subscribe to the channel, you can now. It's a good way to support the gym. Um, you know, if you want to do that, um, it's something we'll talk about more, I guess, as we continue streaming once we've opened back up for regular business. Folks that like watch your stream or like tune in that aren't a part of the gym, that's an easy way for them to support support us. Um, just get a little something back if you're watching our instruction. So, either way, man, we think the Twitch thing is cool, and we plan on continuing. I like Twitch more than actually training. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Heard drunk wrestling kills a virus. Rich should be good. Rich claims, uh, I haven't seen Rich in the chat yet. Has Rich, Rich been here? I don't know what he's doing right now. I haven't seen him in the chat today, but Rich claims his weight's way down. He's not drinking that much, dude. Um, we'll see when he gets back what his cardio looks like, but I do hope you guys put him through the ringer like we, we normally do. <laughs> the verbal ringer. <laughs> All right. Guys, anything else for us? If not, we're going to call it, man. I think it's about that time. His hair did appear to come back, dude. I, I don't know, man. I believe the guy. Thanks for tuning in, Alessandro. Yeah, man. It was good, good to uh, have you on the stream. Um, thank you guys, man. We appreciate it. So, uh, be back yeah like it's Thursday. cool just just like it's cool teaching a uh, class to like a full room you know this would suck if we're streaming to like two people to two so. people yeah it's good yeah. like 20 or 30 of you guys are showing up each time yeah that's continue, awesome man can continue to tune in and ask questions and uh you know think about what, what you guys want to see so what are we doing next time for before you? we go uh we got some so i think graham had asked us about knee cutting so when it asked us we've been knee cutting like Whole time, Just dude. the whole time, dude. So we've covered knee cut we've, yeah. extensively. We've beaten knee cut to death. We covered Kimuras. <laughs> if there's any sort of other submissions you guys like or want to see, or just submissions from certain positions in jujitsu, maybe that would be a good idea for a class. Like, how do I tap people out from side control? Uh, how do I tap people out from the back? Whatever. What are my options? Uh, we're happy to do that. Um, but if not, hit us up. Like we always say, let us know what you guys want to see. Let's see. Uh, butterfly guard. Dude, I'd love I fucking hate Butterfly Guard, but Matt hates Butterfly Guard. Got guys, I kind of we'll show it. We'll show That's our job as instructors. I think Butterfly Guard is uh, really good in a lot yeah, of ways. It's awesome. Really, really good entry point to leg locks and takedowns, particularly the single leg drags. Yeah, drags. If you're a leg lock guy, man, you gotta know some Butterfly Guard. Um, it's really good in no gi. Um, I mean, your your mortal enemy is the body lock pass, but um, still, man, Butterfly Guard's got a lot of game. That was Marcelo's bread and butter. He beat everybody with it, so. Certainly. That's a good idea, too. All right, guys, so our two things we got uh, in our head for maybe the next couple classes, Butterfly Guard and Neon Belly. Uh, two, I, we both like Neon Belly a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, like, exactly a Butterfly Guard player, but I'm, I'm really familiar with yeah. it, and I like it, so uh, we can definitely show you guys what we know. All right, guys. See you guys Thursday. Oh, <laughs>